Hello Mila, hello Jack, hello everybody else is watching. Welcome to Storytime with Grandad. Today's book is from Captain Pugwash and it is Pugwash Aloft. It was a warm sunny evening and Captain Pugwash had decided to take a day off from sailing. He had found a smooth part of the sea sheltered from the waves by a large treasure island and there his ship, the Black Pig, lay rocking gently at anchor. It was just the weather for sleeping, or playing, or fishing. But for once, the pirates weren't doing any of these things, for the captain had got them all together on the poop deck for singing practice. And it was not going very well. No, 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 he cried. You'll never make good pirates unless you can sing a sea shanty properly. Tom? Give him the tune again. So little Tom, the cabin boy, played the tune on his concertina and the pirates patted their chests, cleared their throats and began to sing. Away, boys, away, away to Rio, so fare you well, my pretty young girl. We're off to the Rio Grande. Now, the captain wasn't very happy about the singing, but he would have been far less happy had he known what was going on down below. Cutthroat Jake, the most terrible pirate afloat, had been hiding in his ship on the other side of the island, and now, with a crew of dreadful desperados, he was rowing very stealthily right up to the Black Pig, and Cutthroat Jake was Captain Pugwash's worst enemy. Hey, hey, hey! muttered Jake in a throaty whisper. Just listen to him singing. I'll give that old scallywag something to sing about. Scramble up the sides, boys. They're going to get the shock of their lives in a minute. Hey! So Jake's pirates climbed very quietly out of their longboat. And a moment after, they slipped silently onto the deck of the Black Pig. Now we'll have some sport, me arties, whispered Jake. Didn't know I could sing, did you? And neither Pugwash nor his crew noticed anything odd happening. As Jake and his men sneaked silently behind them and joined in the singing. That's better, cried Captain Pugwash, conducting like anything. Now you sound like twice as many pirates. Then suddenly he stopped, and the music stopped, and the captain looked, and he saw that there were twice as many pirates. Jump on em! roared Cutthroat Jake. We've got em where we want em now, boys! And a moment later the deck of the Black Pig was covered with rival pirates kicking and biting, scratching and fighting... Now, Captain Pugwash's men weren't much good at this sort of thing. And very soon, Jake's men had them all trussed up and quite helpless. And the captain himself had such a time at the hands of cutthroat Jake that it, that it wasn't long before he turned and ran away as fast as he could go. And, as there aren't many places you can escape to on a ship, he made for the nearest mast and started to climb up up and away from the enemy pirates. High above the deck, he felt a little safer, but down at the bottom of the mast, cutthroat Jake shook his great fist and shouted, You won't escape me that way. I'll climb up too and throw you into the sea with my own hands, I will. Ha <laughs> ha! Now, it happened that nobody had taken any notice of Tom because he was only a cabin boy. But Tom had been watching everything and had thought of a clever plan to save Pugwash. Please, Captain Jake, he called. I've got a much better idea and it'll save you a lot of trouble. Why not saw the mast down? And he held up the biggest saw he could find on the ship. Well, blow me down, said Jake. It's that cabin boy of his. That's a very good idea of yours. I'll make a pirate of you yet, me lad. 
Right oh Captain, said Tom. Here you are, I'll help you. So, after they had put all of Pugwash's pirates down below, Cutthroat Jake's men gathered round eagerly to watch as Jake and little Tom began to saw. High at the top of his mast, Captain Pugwash heard the noise and thought that his last hour had really arrived. It's coming, roared Jake, it's coming, down she comes. And with a terrible rending, tearing noise, down came the mast. But there were two things that Cutthroat Jake in his excitement hadn't noticed. The first was that when the mast came down, it would snare him and all his pirates in a fearful tangle of ropes and spars. And the second thing Jake hadn't noticed was that Tom, who had been very careful to get out of the way, had tricked him into soaring down the wrong mast. So while Jake and all his men were struggling helplessly under the fallen mast, Captain Pugwash was still clinging on, quite safe, to the top of the next one. It's all right, Captain, you can come down now, called Tom, and down came Pugwash even faster than he went up. And a moment later, he was standing in triumph over Cutthroat Jake. And then they untied all Captain Pugwatch's pirates and tied up Jake and all his. And Tom rolled them over the side of the black pig so that they fell, plop, back into their own longboat. And there they left them, struggling and kicking and quite unable to do anything. But the black pig sailed away with Captain Pugwash and his men, feeling so pleased with themselves that they sang for all they were worth and danced with joy. And Tom the cabin boy just smiled to himself as he played on his concertina and said nothing. The end. Goodbye, Mila. Goodbye, Jack. I'll see you soon. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.